talk me um, about your time in Kenya and relocating to Kenya. I mean, what's, what was your first experiences being in Kenya and, you know, just experiences with Kenyans? Just be honest. How was it? Look, just because I am by trait and personality very straightforward, I'm called rude in Kenya nearly on a weekly basis. Just for instance, this is, this is a true story. Every em employee that enters my company, I give a disclaimer at the beginning of the, the, the contract. I says, look, I will eventually raise my voice and shout because this is what is culturally acceptable where I come from. And this is how we out our frustration. It has nothing to do with trying to humiliate you, attack you, abuse you. It's just me being frustrated and raising our voices in Italy. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But here it is. Even in Uganda, Tanzania was murder. <laughs> raising, raising your voice. Because everyone is so soft and spoken. I try to adapt as, 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 as much as possible. So this was, you know, one of those cultural differences between where I come from and the, all of East Africa, not just Kenya. Because yeah. I first moved to Tanzania for a few months. I did a volunteering uh, a project that, uh, that in, 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 in an area called, um, I mean, near a town called Musoma. In fact, it was a place called Butiama, a small village called Busegwe. And then I realized I love, love rural Africa. I just like that setting. I just, I just love being part of a project that could create an impact, right? But I was always a business person. So I was always looking at business opportunities, even when I was volunteering, or even when I moved to Uganda and I started my NGO career. So Uganda was fundamental to understand, not only that I enjoyed rural Africa, East Africa per se, but that I also had a thing for arid lands. So I start moving around and seeing what opportunities were there. And in Uganda, I started creating income generation activities, setting up businesses for NGOs. But that's still part of my you know, profile, yeah. if you wish. So then after Uganda in 2014, sorry, I did 2010 to 2012. In 2012, I moved back to Australia, where I had done my studies, right? And I decided with, with my mom, who, who was the force behind my Australia experience, because yeah. she really thought I could do very well in a beautiful country like Australia. She was like, why don't we uh, reinvest in Australia where you can get a visa mm -hmm. and we can get permanent residences here? And I, I thought it was a good idea. When I went there, number one, I, I really missed being here. I, 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 I felt I was not meant to be in Australia anymore. Mm -hmm. I felt I was meant to be here. So. I suffered a little bit. I could not get a job within the sector where I started, which is now development, even community development, because I had international development experience, specifically in the field. And in Australia, development was, thank you so much, was mostly community development, as in drugs, drug and alcohol, disability, and homeless uh, people. So I had no experience in any of that. So I had to go back to retail which is what I did in my 20s. I was a salesperson and a, and a boutique manager, a shop manager. I did four or five years of retail, and I was good at that, because after all, selling is what I do. Yeah. So in a nutshell, I came back to Kenya in 2014, because in 2013, my son was born in Australia, in Sydney, with a Kenyan partner. Ah, okay. So you met in Australia? We met in Australia. We met in Australia. We got together. We had a child. Then we decided, as a couple, to move to Kenya for the maternity leave. Because us not being Australian, we had absolutely no benefits. Yeah. And Australia is expensive. So we came, we came to, to, to Kenya pretty much together. And uh, we separated shortly after. But uh, I was here. They were here. Yeah. Clearly, I want to stay close to my son. So I looked for a job. And I found it with an Italian NGO. That's how I got to be in Kenya. First time I visited Kenya was when I was in Uganda for a weekend, and it was just fun. And uh, we're talking about 20, 2010, and Havana in, in, in uh, Westlands was, was already there. And I remember being in Westlands, uh, clubbing, and just having a good time. Yeah. But then when I got back in 2014, I was looking for a job. That's a different scenario. Yeah. And I got one with, with, with an Italian NGO in Isiolo, which is takes us back to 
to the question before about uh, you know how I started and, yeah. and Kenya is now my country I will definitely invest in a permanent residency I will be eligible in in, in one year so I'm, I'm, I'm here to stay. 